Hello and welcome to this lesson for Key Stage 3 and GCSE Grade 5 where we'll be looking at direct and indirect proportion using a very very clever technique called the unitary method so that by the end of this lesson you'll be able to answer questions such as this so stay tuned. So on to our first question 12 students need to drink 3 litres of water for a particular activity how much do 20 students need to drink? Now, you first need to identify whether a question is a direct proportion question or an inverse or an indirect proportion, okay? So, you know, you have to look at the relationship between them. And you set it up in the following way. So 12 students drink three liters. Now, if you're gonna have 20 students drinking water, then obviously the amount of water that's consumed is going to increase. So therefore, this is a direct relationship. As one goes up, so does the other. So as the number of students go up, the number of litres of water that you require also goes up. Now, I like to use this method called the unitary method. And it's a really, really simple method, very efficient and quite simple to see what's going on. Um, and it involves coming down to finding out what the one represents. So in this case, what one student represents, okay? So let's have a look here. So 12, how does it become one? So how does 12 become one? We divide by 12. So on the same side, because it's a direct proportion relationship, we do the same thing on the other side as well. We also divide by 12. Now three divided by 12, and that gives us 0 0.25. Of course, you can also simplify the fraction as well, but we'll just stick to the decimal. Now, if we go back to this side, how does 1, remember this is a 1 here, how does 1 go to 20? Well, we multiply by 20. So on the other side, again, the direct relationship, we also multiply by 20 as well. So 0 0.25 times by 20, and the answer is 5. So that means that 20 students need to drink five liters of water. As a quick check, you can see whether or not the question makes sense. 12 students drank three liters. 12 is almost half of 20. So therefore the number of liters of, uh, that is consumed would almost double, okay? And five is almost double that. So yeah, it kind of makes sense as well from that perspective, if you look at it logically. So 20 students is equal to five liters. We'll do one more direct proportion because these are quite straightforward, students understand that, and then we'll move on to um, a few indirect proportion questions. So have a look at this last one here for direct proportion. Um, do yourself, press pause and, and have a go at it yourself. Right, now the question is 400 grams of flour is required to make eight muffins. How many grams of flour would you need to make 30 muffins? So let's get straight into it. We want to know what is required for one muffin. Okay, so how does 8 become 1? We divide by 8 because it's a direct proportion relationship. We also divide this side by 8. So 400 divided by 8, and that gives us 50 grams of flour. So 50 grams of flour is required for one muffin. So we want 30 muffins. So we are going to multiply by 30. 1 times 30 will give us our 30 obviously so this side we also multiply it by 30 so 50 grams times by 30 so 5 times 3 is 150 so we have a hundred and oh, 1500 sorry we have to add the other zero so 1500 grams of flour is needed to make 30 muffins and there you have it okay so now we move on to indirect proportion now it's really, really important that you read the question carefully so you understand whether a question was a direct um, proportion or one of these indirect ones. So let's have a read of this question. It takes six builders 30 months to build 10 houses. How long will it take 18 builders? How many months will it take 18 builders to build, also build 10 houses? Now, the first thing you've got to understand why it's an um, indirect proportion question is because if you have more people, so for example, six builders took te, um, 30 months to build 10 houses. If you have more builders on the site building the same amount of houses, would you expect this 30 months to go up, so it should take longer, or should it take less amount of time? 
of course it would take less amount of time because you've got more builders on site now you can probably get this by looking at it in a proportional way so for example six um, and 18 the relationship between them is that you times six by three but i want to go back and use the method i've just taught you because i want to teach you one method that you can actually utilize in many many different ways so you have a lot less to learn basically okay so let's go back to the method that i was employing we are going to find out how long it takes one builder to build 10 houses okay so what do we do we are going to divide here by six to get to one all right now because it's an inverse relationship we are not going to divide the other side by six we are going to do the opposite which is to multiply by six so 30 times by six is equal to 180 so 180 months so does this make sense one builder takes 180 months to build 10 houses yes it does because it took six builders 30 months to build those 10 houses. So one person building 10 houses will take them a very, very long time. Now, let's go back to this side. How does one become 18? We multiply it by 18. So what we're gonna do, because it's an inverse relationship, we are going to do the opposite of multiplying on the other side, which is to divide by 18. What is 180 divided by 18? You get 10. So the answer is 10 months. It takes 10 months for 18 builders to build 10 houses. Okay, so on to the next one. This next question, it takes four people, two hours to tidy one house. So they clean the house. How long would it take eight people to tidy that same one house? Let's apply our method again. I know that there are other ways to do it, but if we continue that method, like I said, that would get drilled in and you'll be able to answer all sorts of questions with ease. Right, so let's go back to this question. We want to find out how long it takes one person to tidy one house. Right, so we're going to do four. To, to get to one, we divide by four. So on this side, we're going to multiply by four. So it would take them eight hours. And that makes sense. Um, it would take eight hours for one person to tidy that same house where it took uh, two hours for four people. Okay. So now let's find out how to get from one person to eight people. We know we need to multiply the one by an eight. So therefore, this side, what we're going to do, we are going to do the opposite of multiplying by eight, which is to divide by eight. So that would be eight divided by eight, which is one hour. So it takes eight people one hour to tidy that same house. Now, I did say at the beginning that there are other ways that you could have done this and you could have spotted that straight away. So four people, two hours. If you double the number of people, the time would be halved. So therefore, eight people would take one hour. But I just wanted to show you that method once again. Now, this next question I want you to try. The time taken to build a house is inversely proportional to the number of builders. If there are six builders, it takes 80 days to complete this house. How many builders must be employed to build the house in just 16 days? So have a go at this one yourselves and then press play again when you are ready to go through with me. All right, so hopefully you've set up your um, equations in the same way or in a similar way. Now, this time we are looking for the number of builders so if I go from six to one, I don't have something to multiply by to get to the number of builders. So I can't use that same approach. However, I can use that approach on the other side. So if I go down to how long, so if I go down to one day, okay, by dividing this by 80, I can multiply this side by 80 to give me six times eight, so that's 48 and add the zero. So 480 builders are required to build one house in one day. Now that's a lot of work. That's a lot of people on site, okay? Um, but you'll expect that because if you want a house built in one day, you're gonna have to have a lot of builders on site, okay? Now, how do we go from one to 16? We multiply by 16 over there. So therefore, what we're going to do on this side, we're going to divide by 16. 
So 480 divided by 16, so 40, that is 3, and that gives us 30. So therefore, you need 30 builders on site to build one house in 16 days. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson and you are more confident with using direct and indirect proportion, using the unitary method. Make sure you keep practicing the questions, go into your various textbooks and do the exercises. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to share with your friends and family. See you in the next video.